All right, hello and welcome back, Alex students. So this is the first video that I've made in a long time. I am gonna to try to start making more videos, um, especially if there are topics that you are suggesting. So this is a comment that I got on another video. So I thought that I would go ahead and, and take some time to, to make a video today. So this is an Alex topic called calculating the solubility of an ionic compound when a complex may form. And this is a definitely a very challenging multi-concept uh, Alex topic. So really it's combining two different things, KSP and KF. So solubility product, um, you know, equilibria type problems and also formation constant, um, you know, complex ion uh, type problems. So a lot to, to unpack here. So I'm going to go through this whole problem. It's going to take me a while, um, but I'm going to try to explain every aspect of this and maybe make it really clear what's going on. So let's go and get started. So the first part of this problem is actually just a, a very basic uh, KSP type problem. So we're asked to find the solubility um, of copper bromide in pure water. And that's the first you know, column here or first row here and in 0 0.076 molar sodium cyanide. So we're going to put this on hold for now. We're just going to go ahead and do the KSP for copper bromide. And so the first thing that I've done here is actually just written out the KSP um, expression. And if you're not sure like how I got to this or why I did this, basically what I'm looking at, um, the sort of the key things, I see that it's, it says calculate the solubility um, where you're probably working on KSP in class. So, so that should be in your mind. Uh, of copper bromide in pure water. So that's all I'm focused on. It also says you'll probably find some useful data in the Alex data. So I actually went to the Alex data and um, looked at my KSP. So solubility product constant KSP. And then I'm basically looking on this list for copper bromide. And I see that copper bromide right here with a KSP of 6.27 times 10 to the minus 9. So anytime that you're given a KSP for, you know, some, some uh, complex, some some compound basically the first thing you should always do and hopefully you guys are doing this already um, is to write out the ksp expression the ksp expression will always follow this form where you've got your solid on the left hand side and then you're breaking it up into your two um two ions on the right hand side uh, you should also put in your phase labels here aqueous aqueous but i was being lazy and then from here to solve this, to figure out what the solubility of copper bromide is, basically the solubility is how much of it is going to be dissolving. You know, what's the molarity, how many moles per liter of this will be dissolving in pure water. And we can just use this KSP and this is, just becomes a simple ice table where our initial concentration is going to be zero of both of our, um, of our ions. Obviously, we're going to be shifting to the right here. So plus X plus X. And then at equilibrium, we're going to have an X value of copper and an X value of bromide ion. So maybe we'll fill in our ice table. Since this is a solid, it does not show up in our ice table, so we don't need to worry about it. And then in terms of solving this for X, we know that our KSP is going to be equal to 6.27 times 10 to the minus ninth. And then that's going to equal X times X. Basically solve this for X pretty straightforward. And so then the value of X here um, is 7.92, or, well, I'm rounding to two sig figs already, 7.9, uh, if you do this in the calculator, 7.92 times 10 to the minus fifth, and then we're going to round that to two sig significant digits, which would be 7.9 times 10 to the, to the minus fifth. So this is the, is the X value, but we always want to make sure that we understand what that represents, what that means. And so... It, what this is, is this is the equilibrium molarity of copper ions, same with bromide ions. And since this is a one to one to one ratio, then that also means that this is the solubility of copper bromide, because where do these ions come from? They come from copper bromide dissolving. So if you end up with 7.9 times 10 to the minus fifth moles per liter of copper plus ions, which would be the same as bromide minus ions, then, you know, where did that come from? It came from uh, 7.9 times 10 to the minus fifth moles per liter of copper bromide dissolving into those ions. So that's the first step. That is our answer here for solubility in pure water. Now for the solubility in the sodium cyanide, this is where it gets a little bit, you know, more complex, more challenging. And the first thing that, I, that I'm thinking of when I see sodium cyanide, so when I see sodium cyanide, I know that basically this is gonna dissolve completely because I know that solubility rules for sodium, uh, anytime you see sodium, you know that, that that complex is gonna dissolve, right? If it's an ionic compound, we know that that's gonna dissolve. So really, this sodium cyanide is a source of Na plus ions, 
plus CN minus ions. That's really what I'm seeing there. We're going to have 0 0.076 molar um, sodium plus and 0 0.076 molar uh, CN minus ions. So then the question becomes, well, what are these things going to do with these ions over here? Now, again, I said that sodium plus is always going to be soluble. So we don't really need to worry about the sodium plus. It's just going to be a spectator ion. We don't, we really don't care about it. So then the question becomes, well, this CN minus, is this going to do anything with our ions that are present over here? And sure enough, copper will react with CN minus. Now you might be thinking, well, how would you know that? And again, that's going back to this Alex data table. So this uh, complex ion formation, this is the table that you want to be looking at for this, this topic. And basically what we're looking for on this, on this list is, is there something that combines copper and cyanide? And sure enough here, we've got this copper CN2 overall minus charge with a KF of 1.0 times 10 to the 16th, a huge KF value there. So what this is telling you is that if copper plus ions and CN minus ions come you know, in the same solution together, they're going to form this complex ion. So again, I, would, I didn't even know that this existed before I looked at this table. So you, the expectation is not that you would look at copper and look at CN minus and say, oh yeah, that's gonna form this complex ion. Um, you know, it's, it's looking at this table and saying, okay, do I see those ions on here coming together to form something? And sure enough, we do. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write out, um, and sort of draw a little picture for, for what's going to be happening, what's going on in this, in this solution. So the first thing, so now we're talking about the second part, 0 0.76 molar sodium cyanide, uh, copper BR solid is going to be a source for these copper plus ions. We'll put in our phase labels this time, plus Br minus aqueous. And then alongside this, we're going to have another reaction that's occurring. So these copper plus ions will then be able to react with the CN minus ions. And we know that that's gonna be a one to two multiple ratio, because again, we, we saw on this that our copper cyanide is a one copper plus with two CN minus um, ligands. That's actually what, what they would be called here. Aqueous, and we know that the CN minus is coming from the sodium cyanide because sodium is, is always gonna be soluble. That's gonna be, and this is, we should write, this is a KSP. And then this is going to form our complex. So we're gonna have copper and then CN2. And then overall, we've got a minus one charge because the copper's got a plus one charge. We've got two of these CN minus ligands. So overall, this complex has a minus one charge. Um, and that's also going to be aqueous. We should point that out because it's a, it's a complex ion formation. Um, that's going to be there as well. And then this is going to be our KF. Now, we can combine these. So essentially, if we think about what's going on, so I'm going to draw a line underneath here. Um, I'm also going to draw like a quick little uh, cartoon picture. I know that we always love these. So here's our solution. And we're starting with 0 0.076 molar sodium cyanide. We don't care about the sodium, but we do care that there's CN minus ions floating around in this solution. And then at the bottom, we have our solid. This is our solid copper bromide. And then this is going to be a source for these copper plus ions, right? So this is going to dissolve just a little bit, right? It's got a small KSP, but there's going to be some amount of this copper plus that's getting kicked into the solution as copper plus. And then as that copper plus is in solution, then it's going to start reacting with this uh, CN minus, with the cyanide to form this complex ion, right? So then as, as these bash into one another in solution, then we're going to be able to form that copper CN2 minus complex ion, right? So, so that's going to be the result of this happening in, in solution. So then we can actually add these two equilibrate together. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel out things that show up on both sides. And then I'm going to write out the, the overall whole reaction that's occurring. Plus two CN minus aqueous is in equilibrium with Br minus aqueous plus our complex ion copper c n minus oops two minus out here sorry about that um make that look a little bit better or worse okay 
So this is our overall reaction that's occurring. And hopefully this picture sort of, you know, helps you understand what's going on there. And now we can start plugging things in. So we know that we're starting with 0 0.076 molar uh, CN minus. And I know that sometimes this is a little confusing where you're looking at this two here. This two is really, it, it's not going to affect this initial concentration. Um, that initial concentration of CN minus is coming from the sodium cyanide. And that is a one to one, right? So, so maybe if, if there was, you know, different ratios here, but if you've got 0 0.076 molar sodium cyanide, when this dissolves into Na plus and CN minus, you're going to end up with 0 0.076 molar sodium plus and 0 0.076 molar CN minus. And so I'm going to take that and put that down here as my initial in this new um, reaction. And I'm going to say that I've got zero Br minus and zero of my, of my um, complex ion. So then I'm going to run the ice table. So this is going to be minus 2x plus x and plus x. And then at equilibrium, 0 0.076 minus 2x, x, and x. So we, we've got a, you know, an ice table here. We've got an equilibrium. The question then becomes, well, what is the equilibrium constant for this new reaction that we've created. And if you think back to, you know, some of the, the earlier work that you might've done, when we add two equilibrium reactions together, we actually multiply their K values to get to the new K value. So the K value here, we'll call it big K, is equal to KSP times KF. And we know the values for both of these. We've, we've already used the KSP here and then the KF we actually have from our Alex data table. So we know that the KF here for our copper cyanide is one times 10 to the, 10 to the 16th. It's a huge value, right? So, uh, so what that's telling us is that as these copper two plus ions are put into solution, they're really immediately and, and rapidly forming this complex ion with the CN minus ions that are in solution. So that's where we can get that, that information. And let's actually just write that out over here. So 6.27 times 10 to the minus ninth and then our KF value was 1.0 times 10 to the 16th. And so then the value there, I think I've written it down over here, um, looks like 6.27 times 10 to the 7th is our K value for this, oops, can't see it, for this equilibrium, you know, that we've, that we've run our ice table here. So now we've got a K value, we've got an ice table at equilibrium. Um, we can go ahead and solve this. So let's write this out. 6.27 times 10 to the seventh is gonna be equal to x times x. This is a solid, so we're obviously leaving it out. 0 0.076 minus two x, and then this is gonna be squared because of our, our coefficient of two here. Now, this is a, a sort of cool special scenario where we've got a perfect square on the right-hand side. So you might look at this, you might say, oh, I've gotta use the quadratic, and, and you certainly could, you know, work this all out using the quadratic formula. But in this case, we've, we've got a perfect square, so we can actually square root both sides. Um, and that's gonna sort of simplify things. So then that's gonna end up looking like this. I'll just write it right underneath here. Um, so the value ends up being 7,918.33 is equal to x. So x squared here just turns into x, and then we get rid of this squared here, 0 0.076 minus 2x. Then I'm going to skip over doing all the, the algebra here, but basically, you know, we're going to, we're going to multiply this up. We're going to solve for X. Um, at this stage, if you're, if you're tackling this, this topic, I'm sure that you're able to do this. Um, if not, leave a comment below and I can make another video, but basically I'm going to solve this for X and it ends up being the X in this case is 0 0.038 molar. Um, just rounding it right, right away to two sig figs. Um, so I'm going to put a box around this. So now we, what we want to talk about is what does this represent? This represents the uh, amount of Br minus or the amount of the complex ion that's formed, right? So the X value represents at equilibrium, how much of this Br minus or how much of this complex ion um, will there be present? And we can sort of draw that back all the way to the original question because what we're actually interested in is how much of this copper bromide is actually going to be dissolved, right? So down here, as this is dissolving, how much of this is actually going to be dissolved? Well, if this is a one 
to one to one ratio, you know, it's two CN minus, but what we, we really care about is what's the ratio between copper bromide and Br minus, or, you know, this, this complex ion, um, it's one to one to one. So however much of this um, is formed is how much copper bromide actually dissolved. So this 0 0.038 molar is actually just like earlier, we were talking about, you know, same sort of logic. Um, this is actually the solubility of the copper bromide as well. So that's our answer for part two. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, this is definitely a very challenging, you know, topic, but, uh, you know, stepwise, just, you know, be, be very um, uh, careful about, about what you're doing. This sort of combination of the, of the two equilibria is, is obviously key and very important, and it will be common throughout all of these types of problems. Be really careful about your multiple ratios. Um, and then I think drawing these little pictures is really helpful as well. So uh, hopefully that, that works, um, and, and thanks a lot.